Hey guys, welcome back. This is Scott York and Scott York Fitness. As promised, I am doing a YouTube video today on, I can't believe I'm saying this, Steve Reeves 1976 XJS V12 Jaguar GT Grand Tour. Let's just take a look at it real quick. I'm going to shut up and let you enjoy. Every garage gym needs a garage gym car, right? And what better car than Hercules? Steve Reeves. And this car is not in this garage, it is in storage. So there you go, there's kind of a walk around and we're going to get to the inside in a minute but I want to give you some history on this car if you're not sure about it. So the story goes in 1977 Steve walked into the Hornburg Jaguar dealership in Beverly Hills and it was May 1st. And here's the original license plate right here. SR Jag 3, Beverly Hills, California. And so the salesperson, whose name was Jay Strauss, I can't remember what his first name is, he comes up to Steve Reeves and he says, May I help you? And Steve says, I'd like to purchase that car right there. And the salesperson says, I'm sorry, you can't buy this car. Rock Hudson has reserved the car and so it's not for sale. And so Steve says, I know Rock Hudson, and I know he's in Europe right now working on a film. Tell you what, sell me the car and order him another one. And he didn't say in a cocky way, just a matter of fact way. And so the salesman says to Steve, and you are, and Steve says, I'm Steve Reeves. Not in a cocky way, but just as a matter-of-fact way. Now Steve was around, let's see, he was 51 years old at this time, so his movie days were over, but at 51, you know, he was still in the public eye with appearances and book signings and things like that. The salesman then recognized Steve, because how could you not, right? If you go to the movies or if you pay attention, so the salesman says, I'll be right back, excuse me. The salesman goes into the uh, office where Charles Hornberg is, and then he comes back, and there's Steve again in the middle. Steve's looking at his car. The salesman comes back and says, we'll be happy to sell you the car. Steve says, I'll pay cash, and I'll be back and pick it up tomorrow. So the next day, May 2nd, 1977, Steve comes down and gets the car. And here's the receipt from that purchase. This is the actual receipt, guys. So Steve paid $21,016.95. That's Steve's signature. There's your date, 5-2-77. Charles Hornberg. Jesse, that was the salesman's name, Jesse Strauss. So $21,000 in 1977 is equal to $90,000 in 2021. 
So that would be like buying a $90,000 car, but there you go. This was Steve Reeves' 1976 Jaguar. So it's a 76 model, but he bought it in 77. And I guess because Rock Hudson had reserved it, that's why it wasn't purchased in 76, because they had to specially build it for Rock, the color combination, which is silver gray with red interior. I can't remember the actual Jaguar name for that red, but I'm sure somebody will know. All right, so I gotta do a few more things here in this video, and I'm gonna do a driving video in the future, and we're gonna actually start this car up in a minute, because I could talk for hours. But I have a friend on Instagram, Official Forgotten Fitness. I posted this picture right here of Steve with this car. This is the actual car, and there's his boxer, Rocky, from the movie, named after Rocky from the movie, Rocky and Steve. And here is the sales sticker. The car was brand new. Maybe that was the day he bought it. I'm not sure. But this is the car. And you can see the white walls, which have been replaced with all black tires. So, official forgotten fitness. I believe his name is Rudolph. I'm going to get you this picture. i got to make a copy of it because this is the only one I have. So, bear with me. But yeah, there's Steve with the car. And that's his ranch in Valley Center right there behind him. So, you don't see a car like this every day. And whenever I take this car out, it is a head turner, as you can imagine. There's just something sexy in the aesthetics, you know. And Steve was all about lines and aesthetics and balance. And so Steve had an artistic quality about him, the way he dressed, the way he did his hair. And so this car, to me, is an expression of that. It's art the lines, the balance. Somebody described this car as a hammer in a velvet glove. All right, well, let's take a look at the inside here. This is all original. And I've had this car in the shop. It pains me even to say, I had it in the shop for five months. I used a local restoration mechanical service in Austin, who come highly recommended. They worked on Lance Armstrong's hot rod. I don't remember if it was a GTO or a Camaro. Cheryl Crow gave Lance a hot rod, and he took it to the place that I took it. Colvin Automotive is the name, C-O-L-V-I-N. They do great work. They are busy but they did great work with this car because this car was sitting for two years and it needed some TLC, tender love and care. All right, pardon the camera work. I'm just doing handheld today. In the future, maybe I'll break out the tripod. So let's take a look here. There's so much to look at. All right, stock speakers. And in a minute, we're gonna look at what eight tracks did Steve have in the car here. I've had a couple of people on Instagram, Ryan Davies, I'm sorry if I'm getting your name wrong, and then another gentleman who wanted to know, well, all right, he had eight tracks in the car, because Steve was a big music fan. What kind of music was he listening to? So you got your lamps over here, so that you can see what you're doing. And here is the view that Steve saw when he was driving this car, guys. There's the view. All right. Look at that. Jaguar emblem. This car has 58,000 miles on it. We're going to start it in a minute. The clock and that's just the way these Jaguars are. They're finicky. And the electrical stuff, you know, the car's 45 years old. That clock is not correct. 
I'm pretty sure it's an easy fix. Next time I take it to the shop, I'll have him have them fix things like that. When you own a car like this, there's always going to be things that need to be fixed. But so what? As my friend Joe Vitale said, it's Hercules' car. These seats, red leather, very, very comfortable. So this car, from what I've read, these were built for like executives and celebrities. Executives who drove distances on the highway so that they could get there in comfort and in style. And also celebrities. So here we have our hazard button. You know, if you need to stop off on the side of the road and have a protein drink or something, you don't want to get rear-ended, so you got to put your hazard lights on. Here we have heated window. Here's the clock. Here's map lights, and those are like this right here. That might actually be the switch for this, but this is burned out. And then over here, it says interior. It's an interior light. And then down here you've got your air conditioning and you've got your 8-track right here and look at that how's that for a manly gear shift right there so these are an interesting shape they're very small skinny fragile but you know once you start using them and this is an automatic once you start using them it just feels good so it makes sense and then you've got this brushy stuff here in the middle. And then you've got your ashtray here. Now Steve didn't smoke. Alright, there's your ashtray. Wouldn't that be funny if there was an ashtray full of cigarettes in there or something else? <laughs> but yep, that's what they did. They had ashtrays back in the 70s. There's your cigarette lighter, cigar lighter. Like, I enjoy a cigar. And, uh, of course, I would never smoke a cigar in here. This is your door locks right here. It's loud. Hear that? These are your window controls, and they work. One of the qualities I love about this car is this big old armrest right here. And that's one thing I would say about this car. Everything was very well thought out, where everything is. Easy to reach. Here's your headlights. Here's your ignition over here. All right, well, let's go ahead and start it up, shall we? So this is a 12-cylinder. This is a time capsule back to the 70s. Are you ready? Here we go. Yeah, fuel injected. So you got your gauges. This is what you want to pay attention to. Your oil gauge, your gas gauge, your battery over here, and your coolant right here. Now, I live in Texas and it's hot, and so you really want to pay attention to that. Exhaust. 
no rust missing the dash right here if you have a dash I'd love for you to send that to me or I'm sure I can find one on eBay Steve Reeves Hercules Steve Reeves owned this so these are called uh, flying buttresses right here flying buttresses and the Ferrari Dino 246 246 GT also has these flying buttresses. Now Keith Richards owned a Dino and it was in the early 70s that he owned that. Recently, I can't remember how much it sold for, but a lot. All right, I'm gonna turn it off. We're gonna see if these eight tracks work. go v12 power Woo! all right let's open the glove box over here here's the moment we've been waiting for well see you next time guys <laughs> just kidding all right so this is olivia newton john surprised all right let's see if it works and i i haven't even tried to play this in here so i have no idea Let's go. Let's see if this works. I uh, hear some cro cracking and popping over there. Come on, Olivia. Let's turn it up. It says, oh, the light works right here. You can see it's on track three. AM, FM. No. No, no, not yet. Alright, I turned it off. Let's try it again. All right, there you go. So the first one is Olivia Newton-John. Let's see if another one works. Olivia Newton-John, Greatest Hits. There you go. So he was listening to this. Steve sold this car in 1979. So, I'm sorry. He sold the car in 1999. He sold the car in 1999 to his friend George Helmer. So when Steve... Sold the car in 1999, he was still listening to that, Olivia Newton-John. Here's the second one, Music Express, 20 original hits, original stars. Take a look at the back, and then we'll see if it plays Captain and Tennille, Frankie Valley. Now see, I love this music too. I like it. Casey and the Sunshine Band, Elton John, Harry Chapin, Cats in the Cradle, that's a great song. If you have kids, you know what I mean. Barry Manilow, 10CC, Phoebe Snow, The Ritchie Family, David Geddes. I remember that song, Run, Joey, Run. I don't really remember David Geddes. Austin Roberts, The Rocky Soundtrack. Uh-huh. Ozark Mountain Daredevils, Jackie Blue, Mike Post, Jigsaw, Sammy John, Chevy Van. That's a great one. Disco Tex and the Sex Olets. Never heard of that. The Doobie Brothers, Frankie Valley, Tony Camilo, Bazooka, Dynamite, Jackie Wakeland, and the Kish, the Kinshasa Band. Black Superman, Muhammad Ali. 1975. Let's see if it works. It's a little awkward getting in there. It's almost like you got to have the car running. Move the gear shift. All right, come on, let's work. Let's work. I know the radio works because I've played FM. I'm gonna give you about 10 seconds and then I'm gonna show you the next eight track. That's also showing on track number three, right there. I don't know if you can see that. Perry Vitale, 
Music Express. What the heck? I don't know what that means. Alright, let's take that one out. That one's a no-go. And then the last one is... Diana Ross and the Supremes. Are you surprised? I really wasn't because I knew that Steve listened to this type of music. I like it as well. Do I listen to it all the time? No. My world is empty without you. Love is like an itching in my heart. I got hurt. I'm not going to read all those, but you can look it up on Spotify and create your own Steve Reeves soundtrack. Olivia Newton-John, Diana Ross, and that other one. Let's try this. Let's see if this one works. Come on, Steve. Help us out. <clears throat> There's been so many weird things, guys, that have happened since I became the guardian of all this Steve Reeves stuff. And I'm going to share <laughs> later on down the road what I mean by that. I remember back in the day, because I grew up with 8-tracks too. I graduated high school in 1982. We had 8-tracks. And sometimes you had to hold them a certain way. Remember that? Before they would work, if you wore out a tape. Like for me, it was Led Zeppelin. Led Zeppelin too, I think. Alright, well, that one didn't work either. But there you go. Those are the 8-tracks that Steve had in his car. Awesome. Right? Alright, who wants to go for a ride? We're going to work out, guys. And then, we're going to go for a bike ride. And you're going to ride Steve's red bike over there. I showed that in another video on YouTube. <laughs> we're going to work out. We're going to go for a bike ride. You're going to be on that bike. And I'll be on the mountain bike. And then, we're going to take the Jag. We're going to go eat. And then we're going to watch some Steve Reeves movies. How's that sound? All right, well, let's see if I have anything else to show you here. If you guys have any questions, let me know. I appreciate you guys, you know, having an interest as I do in Steve Reeves. The guy was incredible for so many reasons. And this car is just another example of that. All right, look what else I got coming up here. Aha, your physique, Mr. America, 1947 speaks. So this was Joe Weider's magazine. Steve Reeves, Mr. America. How's that for a cover? All right, I think I covered everything. Let's do one more little walk around. And if you are seeing this on Instagram, I'd love you to follow because I have a lot more stuff that I'm going to be showing you that belong to Steve Reeves. We're going to be doing some driving in this car. I'm going to get a GoPro or something and I'm going to share some stories about Steve that I've learned that maybe you know, maybe you don't know. But I think it would be cool to be in this car driving and um, just sharing, you know, Steve Reeves stuff, experiences. So I do want to mention that if you know your Jaguars, you know that those early models, the 76, 77, 78, were very problematic with the Lucas uh, electronics. So this Jaguar is all original except for the engine. This is a Jaguar engine, but it's from a 1984 or a 1986 Colvin Automotive discovered that for me. I knew it had another engine in it, but they, they were able to track it down to what year. And um, they said that it was an 84 or an 86 engine, V12 still. It's the HE, high efficiency. So I like that. I know sometimes when you change a classic car, you know, you're messing it up. And some of the some people out there will put a Chevrolet 350. I would never do that. I would never put an American engine in a Jaguar. I mean, that's sacrilegious. 
but it is an upgraded engine. It's the HE high efficiency. It gets better gas mileage. It has higher horsepower and it fits very, very well. All right, guys. Well, that's all I got today. Sorry to ramble on, but this was somewhat of a special video here and I wanted to make sure that you guys got a really good look at this. All right. Um, we'll do more coming up. Make sure you subscribe. If you have a friend that's a Steve Reese fan or a Jaguar fan, show them the video. If you have comments, man, I'd love to hear from you. Whatever you got on your mind, I'd love to hear it. All right, have a great day, guys, and we will talk later.